Hello, in this video, I'm going to give you a brief summary of how the neuromuscular junction changes uh, in response to aerobic endurance training. So I'm gonna start by sharing a little bit with you about the difference between fast neuromuscular junctions and slow neuromuscular junctions. So in a fast neuromuscular junction, and by that, of course, I mean uh, where the motor neuron is sending a synapse to uh, the muscle fiber that it controls. Um, so a fast neuromuscular junction has a higher threshold for depolarization, um, meaning that there has to be a greater amount of stimulus to cause the action potential to generate, so to, to cause depolarization in the muscle fiber. Uh, so it means that it requires more acetylcholine to reach threshold because acetylcholine is the stimulus in the case of uh, muscle action potential. Um, it also, in a fast neuromuscular junction, there will be a higher density of acetylcholine receptors than in a slow neuromuscular junction. Um, so high density of acetylcholine receptors. So more receptors there that are able to receive that greater amount of acetylcholine that is necessary to reach threshold. Um, there will also be a higher density of sodium channels at the end plates, at the motor end plate of the uh, muscle fiber that's receiving the signal. Um, so that means that there are more channels to allow sodium into the muscle fiber, and it's that flow of sodium into the muscle fiber that is the action potential. That's what the depolarization is, is when the sodium is flowing from outside of the muscle fiber to the inside of the muscle fiber and creating a current that flows down the length of the muscle fiber and causes the contraction of the fiber. So if we have more sodium channels that are able to open in response to the stimulus, the acetylcholine, um, then that means that there'll be a faster generation of the action potential. And that's really what it makes it a fast fiber. Um, so it's also more susceptible to use-related reduction in membrane excitability. So what we mean by that is that the more that fiber is contracting, the less excitable it'll be or the less sensitive it will be to the stimulus that would cause more contraction, um, which in a fast fiber makes sense. We want to limit the duration that those fibers are firing at a high rate because it is faster to fatigue. So it's a way that the neuromuscular junction essentially is limiting how much we are asking that muscle fiber to fatigue or muscle fiber to contract uh, so that it doesn't fatigue. Um, and then it also in a large, in a fast neuromuscular junction, we'll have larger amounts of acetylcholine esterase, which is the enzyme that helps break down acetylcholine after the action potential has been generated. Um, so there's larger amounts of that enzyme, which means that they'll will have the greater capacity for breaking down the acetylcholine or getting rid of the stimulus for contraction after the action potential has been generated. So the acetylcholine doesn't linger as long as it does in slow neuromuscular junctions, because the sooner we get rid of that stimulus, the sooner we can stop with the contraction, um, which of course we want to happen in a fast neuromuscular junction because we don't wanna fatigue the fibers. Okay, skip something there, there we go. All right, so ad adaptations to aerobic endurance training. So when we look at the neuromuscular junction and we talk about presynaptic changes, Presynaptic in the case of a neuromuscular junction is referring to the neuron. It's referring to the motor neuron. So before the synapse is the motor neuron. Postsynaptic is after the synapse, that would be the muscle fiber. So presynaptic changes at the neuromuscular junction in response to aerobic endurance training. Um, one is that we have increased and more sustained acetylcholine release. So the motor neuron is actually able to produce a greater quantity of acetylcholine and secrete it in, in a more sustained way so that we can sustain the contraction longer. So with aerobic endurance training, we start to see some adaptations in the neuromuscular junction that allow for longer, more sustained contractions like are required in aerobic endurance training as compared um, to uh, like faster movements or not sustained um, activity um, or more intermittent activity is really what I should call that. 
Um, but we see that we have more sustained acetylcholine release so that we can have more sustained contraction. Um, we also have increased complexity of nerve terminal branching. So there will actually be more branches that sprout essentially that allow for more um, terminals um, so that we can have more um, neuromuscular junctions with that same neuron or that same nerve cell uh, where it's interacting with the muscle fibers that it innervates. Um, we'll also have faster synthesis and transport of specific proteins within the motor neurons. Um, so certain proteins will be synthesized faster and transported to a greater extent within the motor neurons uh, because they will help to develop and grow the uh, neuromuscular junction to facilitate more uh, contraction and more um, synapses being sent to cause more contraction. And then postsynaptic changes, that would be on the muscle side of the synapse. Uh, we'd have increased acetylcholinesterase activity in fast muscle. So you don't see that adaptation in slower muscle, uh, but in fast muscle, we have more acetylcholinesterase. So we're getting rid of that acetylcholine a little bit more efficiently. Um, and then also increased number of acetylcholine uh, receptors so that the muscle fiber will be more sensitive to the increased uh, secretion of acetylcholine from the motor neuron. All right, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.